Okay, I've got a piece of greenware here. This is uh, earthenware, and what I've done is soft-fired it to an O10. I had it for another class. So I've taken some of the Wax On Resist uh, by Mr. Marks. I put it in one of our piping bottles, and what I'm going to do is add the black fine tip to it. Okay, and then you may have a pattern that you're going to transfer to the piece or you might just do something freehand so um, I'm going to just freehand and create some petals here So what I'm going to do is basically outline everything with the uh, resist so that I can do a watercolor technique. So I'm just going to squeeze that out and then create. And I'm going to create the center like that. So I'm laying the tip on this side so that I can glide it along the surface. Okay, so just continue to outline. So what's going to happen is after we put the color in, then these lines will burn off in the kiln. We'll fire it to 04. This is, like I said, earthenware. Um, you could do it on greenware on any clay body. And these lines will then become white to give you a watercolor type look to the design. So this um, will turn. Um, It'll just look not wet. It'll still be purple when it dries.
heavier you apply it, the longer it's going to take to dry. And the heavier you apply it depends on how thick or thin you want those lines. Could have another one. No, I think I'll leave that. Okay, so uh, once you are finished, take that tip off, put your closure back on so that it doesn't dry out, and then you'll need to take a plunger that comes with the piping kit. Here's the plunger. I usually pull some water up into the plunger, attach the tip, and then flush it back and forth until it flows freely to make sure to make sure that you've got all that out of there. Okay. Uh, these are stainless steel. If you don't have time to clean them, you can just drop them in your water bowl and come back later. Uh, with this particular, because it is the wax, it could dry hard in there. I would definitely I'd go ahead and clean it as soon as possible just to make sure that you don't ruin it. Okay. All right. So this will take a minute. Um, to dry. Okay, for this project, um, we're going to do a watercolor background. So um, we have taken our wax on, Mr. Mark's wax on, put it in the squeeze bottle. I attached the black tip, drew my lines out, and let that dry. You have to let it dry before it, um, before you can paint on top of it. I did another one here that is a uh, bisque, commercial piece of bisque. This is a cast earthenware tile. We're going to use CC150 light cerulean, CC151 cerulean, CC152 deep cerulean. We're going to use CC160 key lime. CC-161 Green Leaf, CC-162 Laurel, CC-112 Candy Apple Red, LE-003 Aqua Splash, CC-123 Sunflowers, and CC-116 Florida Orange. I think that's all of them. Okay, so what I've done is take some of the colors out and I've added water to them. I just added um, water to this 150. So 150 is the one we're going to start with. I'm going to use the medium sumi brush. Always dampen your brush first. So we're going to stir this up. The color is heavier than water, so it tends to fall to the bottom. Make sure you really get that stirred up. Okay, so I've got the medium sumi, the 150 into a wash. I'm going to do, um, the flowers are going to be the three ceruleans. So pretty much going to kind of just pat the color on because I want the lighter color along the outer edge. And I'm going to turn it and I'm going to add a little bit more water here to the next color. 
which is the cerulean. Grab a little bit of that and we're going to tuck it near the center where it would be darker and just kind of work your way back. And then I'm going to grab some of the deep cerulean for the darkest point. Rinse the brush. Now, if you feel like you need it, you could add the gloss medium to the colors if that makes it easier for you to blend. So back to the light. You can even like flood the color on. So I'm just barely touching the surface. Um, let's see. So I'm barely touching the surface and it just kind of grabs the color and absorbs it. But again, you can come back. It depends on how modeled. Uh, if you're okay with the, uh, you know, flooding like this, it's going to have a little bit more of a modeled look to it, meaning um, highs and lows of the color. Okay, so I'm grabbing some of the middle color. Make sure you can see this. And placing it. So the uh, wax repels the color, which is wh what I want it to do, because I want white lines there. So I'm just kind of patting that color, grab the dark. And we can come back and add some dark too. See, when you touch it down, it's going to kind of bleed into some of those areas. Or you can come back with just the dark. I've got it on the tip of the brush. And put it in some of those other sections. Rinse. You need to do each petal the same way. If you try to do all your lights and then all your darks, it's going to be too dry. You need it wet on wet so that you can blend the color. So again, you can flood that in. Turn it. I'm going to wipe off that excess. Grab the middle color. And you can see when you start flooding, see how it started running into that other. So, depends on how much you want that to bleed. Grab the darker, the deep cerulean. So this is more of a watercolor effect. If you um, thin some of the colors down too much, like pinks and purples, they can burn off on your stoneware and porcelain at those higher temperatures. So keep that in mind. Or you need to go over it a couple of times so that it will hold them. So constantly turn your work. Flood. Pat. To kind of blend that off. Dark color. Deep cerulean. Okay. You'll just continue around. You could do this in any color combination. Get 
do yellows, oranges, and reds. But constantly turn so that you can um, get the proper blending. So flood. And then pat. Grab the dart. turntable will help. Okay, so I think you get the the idea. larger the brush you use, the softer the look in any type of painting. not too concerned about if I get out of the line because um, we're going to have multicolors in the back ground. Remember, these are uh, translucent underglazes, so they will be transparent. The more coats you add, the more opaque they become. So this is about um, two parts color, three parts water, maybe even two to four. Just don't forget to stir that up as you're using it because that color is going to fall to the bottom. And you're going to get really faint coloring if you only pick what's on the top there.
Okay. I have another piece I'm going to do over here, but I'm going to finish this one first. So that was 160 key line. And we're adding uh, 161 green leaf. And then we've got the laurel. So same type of thing. We can use some of this uh, 123 uh, sunflowers on the tips of some of the leaves. So like on this bigger one, I can flood it in. And maybe on just one side. some of your 161 and a touch of 162. 162 is really dark so be careful with it. Next one will just go to 160. No yellow. Like I said, you can come back and add uh, some of the dark later after that's had time to kind of dry a little bit. Let's do another one with some yellow on the tip. And then just work yourself from light to dark. And then we got one more over here. Let's just do medium and dark on it, just so you can see the difference. Drop 
some of that off. So you can make the decision how dark you want to go. Okay, for the um, centers of the flowers, let's put some of the yellow. And I probably should have had some squiggly lines in there. And then let's add some orange off to one side. This is the Florida orange. Okay. Um, I'm going to add, I've got water in my brush and I'm touching in to that wash of the darker green. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. Okay, so in the background, we're going to have these other colors. Um, I've got some Aqua Splash in this one. And some red, the Candy Apple Red 112. Over here, I'm going to add a little bit more water. Again, working from light to dark. So I'm going to start with some of the yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit more water to that. It seems a little strong. And we can add it here and there. little mush mush I call it and I'm gonna grab some orange start adding it To that yellow a little bit. All right, I'm gonna rinse. Um, grabbing the aqua splash. Soften, pick up some of that red. This will really make everything pop.
some orange in here. Check for any of those spots between your petals that you might have forgotten. Because remember, it's going to be white, so. Okay. Kind of a tie-dyed look that you can bring out and show off any of the colors that you uh, want to emphasize more. You wouldn't have to have this many colors. Okay, you could put some um, of the green off to one side of the center if you wanted. And you could even add brown if you wanted. I'm not going to introduce another color, so I'll just leave it like this. Okay, so then... Um, what's going to happen is when you fire it, all the wax lines are going to burn off and leave white. And then you can um, come back and just clear glaze it. <laughs> 